All right, hello, my name is Mike Pilkington. I am a uh, SANS instructor, uh, it's specifically in the forensics and it's a response curriculum. Joining me, although not uh, you're not hearing him quite yet, is uh, Mark Hallman. And the two of us are gonna give you a little bit of a demo of the live online training format and particularly as it relates to the lab environment. How do we accomplish our labs uh, in this live online format? And we're gonna go through two different scenarios because most of our classes boil down to two different types of lab exercises. One is where our students are working uh, from a VM with pretty much all of the data, all of the, uh, the systems kind of self-contained on their host workstation. And so we'll give you a demo of that type of exercise, specifically using our Forensics 508 class, the Advanced Incident Response and, com and Computer Forensics class. We found that we, we've really come a long way towards uh, collaborating with our students through Slack. And with Slack has become kind of a platform that we're really relying on to have interaction uh, between the students and the instructor, between the students and the virtual TAs, and between the students themselves. We're seeing lots of uh, involvement and collaboration there, which has been really cool. A, a great way to kind of share and, and talk uh, amongst the instructors and the students and, and then the students themselves. But along with that, we found that, you know, we can kind of do a bit of troubleshooting for the labs within Slack. And then we can also take it a, a next step if we need to. And we're actually switching out of our uh, primary training platform, which typically is going to be go-to training, but we can switch over to Zoom and do a one-to-one -one Zoom session with a student who's getting stuck on the lab. And then we'll go on to one more type of lab uh, and, and the other kind of major format that we have our, our, our SANS training labs in is, which is sort of an online format. Oftentimes it's kind of an online cyber range. In this case, we'll talk to you about a particular class, uh, SEC 599, which is our purple teaming class. And uh, we'll show you kind of how we run through a, a lab in that online environment. All right, so that's kind of the plan. Let's go ahead and, uh, and, and walk you through that. So as I mentioned, we'll start with uh, five, uh, 508, Forensics 508. And basically, we're just gonna kind of pick it up as though we were in class. So what I wanna do is kind of come over here to our exercise 1.3, malware discovery. And just as though I was, you know, kind of presenting this in class, I won't go through all the details because, you know, don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, we pretty much run through the major steps. What is it we're trying to accomplish in this lab and go through the, the background and how we would run these three particular tools in this part of the lab. Again, PE scan, density scout, and SIG check. So with our labs, we typically have a bit of preparation, make sure your VM's uh, set up and ready. Uh, one of those is mounting our, our triage image that we're looking at in this, in this exercise. We're gonna look at uh, some data that was acquired from one of the compromised hosts. And then we're going to run these tools to kind of scan the processes on that system to see if it has any anomalous behavior. Now, in this, um, Part of the exercise we get into running the commands. These are command line tools in this case, uh, three different ones, Density Scout being the first. And in the class, I talk a lot about uh, the fact that, you know, it's very convenient to have this workbook where it's all electronic. We can literally copy and paste these commands, but it's also good to actually type them out and get a little bit of muscle memory and understand exactly what each um, parameter and each switch that we're using in the command line, what it's actually doing and what it's accomplishing. And of course, we talk through that in the class, so students have had that background. But to make it easy, so I don't, uh, you don't have to watch me type this, I'm gonna take advantage of the little button here. You might not be able to see it in the recording, but there's a button here that says copy to clipboard. and copy that and I can run it uh, here in the uh, command line window. And what this tool is doing is going through, you know, thousands of different uh, executables and DLLs and different, uh, in fact, we did executables, DLLs and .sys drivers and looking for any anomalous uh, processes and, and uh, portable executables. So that's the first step. There's three more steps, but um, what I'd like to do is just kind of cut ahead to say, all right, I've already introduced this. Students are now working in the lab. And once that's kind of turned over to the students, that's where we, continue our collaboration and we're uh, kind of into the uh, the VMs themselves 
and, and into the exercise themselves. And we basically, at this point, are going to um, kind of turn it over to the students. So let me do this. I'm going to, uh, oh, Mark's got a problem there. He already says, uh, hey, I ran into a density scout. Prompt came back immediately and didn't seem to find any uh, files. So that's a little bit problematic. So let me start a direct conversation with him. I'm going to hit a message to Mark. I'll say, OK, um, that's interesting. Uh, maybe we can take a look at that. So there's a couple of different possibilities here, right? Is we could try to do a bit of troubleshooting uh, within Slack here. Uh, and that's definitely something, you know, the instructor or TA might do at first, but we don't want anybody struggling or getting far behind. So what we'll probably do fairly quickly at some, in some cases is switched over to Zoom. Um, so that's what I'm gonna suggest here. Just kind of cut to the chase here. Uh, let's take a look in Zoom. Uh, do you mind sharing your desktop? All right, let's see if that's okay with him. And Mark Hallman's typing. All right, great. So what I'm gonna do is just type in Zoom and hit enter. And it's going to give us both. He should be seeing the same message on his side of the conversation, but we can go ahead and start a Zoom session and I can share, he can share his screen for me and we can kind of work through it. So I'm gonna say join here and open the meeting. And we don't need the video. I'll just say, I'm gonna say phone call because in this case, I don't wanna get the, uh, the audio wires crossed. So uh, we'll just stick with um, our go-to meeting platform for the moment. So I'm joined in, hopefully, oh, here comes Mark. He's able to join in as well. All right, Mark, are you there? Hey, Mike, yeah, thanks for helping out. Awesome, yeah, no problem. So what I need to do, Mark, is I'm gonna give you uh, ability to share your screen. And if you don't mind sharing your desktop and showing us uh, what the issue you ran into there was. So we okay, can try to troubleshoot that here. Okay, I think I just shared it to you. Here it comes, yep, cool. All right, I see you've got your VM up and running. You said you were having some problems with Density Scout. Um, and yeah. so here in my command prompt window, um, I've run it a few times and I still keep getting the same error, which is, you know, it recognizes that Density Scout's there, but it doesn't return any results and it comes back, I mean, immediately. Okay, yeah, yeah. So if you just do your up arrow real quick, let me just double check okay. what that looks like. Sure, so like that? Yeah, let's hit enter there. And yep, you're right. So it shouldn't should be going through each one of those files, like uh, like I showed, kind of leading into the uh, exercise. Probably could be that you don't have your um, drive mapped. That was uh, one of the things actually specifically for the triage image. Oh. Let's go ahead and check that. See if your e drive yeah, is mapped. I think, I think you're right because I had to reboot, and I don't think I redid that step. So let's see. I think I go here. Uh, so there we go. Right. Yeah, yeah. Double click that. That's our triage image for Timothy Duncan's system. Now we've got your E drive. And yeah. I think uh, go back to your command window and just do the up arrow again. I'll bet you it'll fire okay. off. Oh, there, there we go. Goes. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, keep me posted. If anything else comes up, we can jump back on a session. Okay, thank you. All right, sounds good. I'm going to end this Zoom. All right, so in the meeting there, uh, just, you know, that was a, a quick demo of how we can kind of quickly interact with a student, have them share their screen, literally do the, um, you know, the view over the shoulder like we would do in class. It's just virtual at this point. And so we're bringing multiple tools to the table to be able to do that. 
Uh, but it's working. It's actually working quite nicely. Students are finding it very easy to kind of handle these types of problems and work with the instructors and the virtual TAs to, to solve the problems. All right, so that was a little rundown. We had that kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation with Mark. Again, we could have done a bit of troubleshooting here just within the chat. That's obviously an option if they didn't want to share the screen for one reason or another. But if the students are willing to share their screen, that can speed things up for sure. All right, so that is kind of a brief rundown of you know how we handle some of the labs within the the VMs themselves, which are kind of the self-contained lab. This was working with the Printix 508 exercise specifically. And, uh, and then we also switched uh, over to Zoom to show a bit of troubleshooting one-on-one -on -one with the student. Now, as I mentioned, another question sometimes comes up is, well, how do the other types of labs work? What if it's an online lab? Is it any different? Is it more complicated or is it easier? Um, yeah, it's just different. It's not necessarily uh, certainly not any more complicated, but um, let me switch over to my browser here. And, and what I want to do is go through one of the labs for our SEC 599. That's our purple team, Tactics and, and Kill Chain Defenses. Really cool class, um, actually in some ways somewhat similar to our 508 Advanced Incident Response class. Uh, but this one kind of takes the approach of, hey, here are the different techniques that attackers are using to get into your environment. And then here are some mitigating steps you can take to defend against it, both detect it, but also defend against it. Now, this is a hands-on uh, class as well, and the hands-on portion of it is in an online uh, simulator, essentially, like a cyber range. The way to get in there is in uh, this labplatforms.sans.org site. So I've already logged in. Um, you're seeing the different labs that we have in the class. There's about 25 labs that are accomplished in the first five days of the class. And then there's a final, um, actually it's not a capture the flag, it's a defend the flag, but the final challenge on the sixth day. And all of this is uh, available to us in this online platform. The nice thing about this is we get essentially a full environment uh, to work with. So what I wanted to do is kind of run through just a few steps of this exercise. 3.3, uh, .3, which is looking for persistence mechanisms with auto runs, as well as uh, squaring your environment using OS query, looking for a, a, a malicious persistence mechanism across the environment. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the lab. And it is going to build out, essentially instantiate a, a several VMs in a small kind of small business network. Uh, it's setting up a domain controller, a couple of Windows hosts. There are a couple of Linux hosts there as well, a firewall, um, but different hosts that are pre-configured, uh, pre-populated with uh, the data sets that we need to kind of uh, accomplish these different exercises. Once it starts up, what I'll show you is that in this particular lab environment, it's, it's essentially guiding you through the steps to accomplish the goals of that particular exercise. So you'll see kind of on the bottom part of the screen, literally step by step of what we need to do to work through the exercise. Uh, you'll see here in just a moment, on the right hand side of the screen, we've got a selection of VMs. So in some of the labs, we're literally switching back and forth amongst the different VMs. You might need to jump on the domain controller and implement a group policy uh, across the domain or you might need to jump onto one of the Linux systems to kind of kick off uh, an ELK uh, in, uh, analysis, uh, Elasticsearch uh, instance in that case. But in this situation, we're really just looking uh, specifically at one workstation in this particular lab, uh, and then we'll kick off an OS query to kind of look for malicious persistence methods across the environment. So I'll zoom in here, just give you a brief rundown. Uh, we'll just take it one or two steps, and then I think that you'll get the point of how the labs work. But in this particular exercise, we're giving you the objectives. Again, we're using auto runs. That's a Microsoft application to look for unusual persistence mechanisms. We use different things like signature analysis and, and, and features like that to find anomalies. Uh, once we've spotted an anomaly, uh, we do a bit dig deeper analysis to determine actually if it's malicious or not. In this case, we would find one malicious uh, persistence method and we could use OS query to sweep our environment looking for that on other workstations. All right, so I'll just hit next. There's a little bit more background here. I won't read through that one. 
and let's hit OK. Now on the bottom, as I mentioned, these are kind of the steps to get started. Uh, really, the step one, pretty straightforward. Hey, let's uh, authenticate to the workstation. Here's our credentials. Alan.Marshall, password awesome sauce 123 Awesome sauce 123 There we go. So that's going to get us logged in. Uh, while that's logging in, as I mentioned, over on the right, we've got basically you can go through and skip ahead to any of the steps. You're seeing all the steps that this lab is going to take you through. And, um, and that could be handy to go back. You can go back and you know, just check those steps, redo them. Uh, you can also switch to different machines. So on the right is several different machines that's part of the small business network. Right now we're on Workstation 02. Uh, it's not showing Workstation 01 because it's not necessary for this particular lab, uh, but you do have access to the particular VMs that are needed uh, for each lab that you're on. And so we could certainly switch over to the domain controller if we needed to do something on the domain controller, switch over to the firewall if we needed to work on the firewall, and, uh, and so on. But in this part, we're sticking with uh, Workstation 02. We've completed the first step. So I'll hit Done here at the bottom. And so the next step is saying, well, in this case, we're going to uh, locate a vulnerable piece of software. We're actually going to install a vulnerable piece of software called IceCast. And it's really just to demonstrate uh, how vulnerabilities happen, how attackers take advantage of those. So uh, the steps here on the bottom say go to blue team folder and then vulnerable software and then install IceCast 2.0.0. Allen.marshall.adm and the password is a little easier. I'm going to try to see if I've typed it right. I think I did. Hit yes. There we go. Um, and so the final part of this, if we look at the, the instructions down here, say so the final part is essentially just run through the default settings uh, of installing IceCast. All right, so I'm just going to hit yes and next a bunch of times. Agree. Next, next, next. And we'll get it installed and finished, OK? Now that we've done those steps, we can hit done and proceed. I will show you another nice feature of this lab environment is that it has screenshots along the way. So if there were multiple screenshots um, that the author wanted to show you, you can go through multiple screenshots. In this case, there's just one, but just kind of showing how, how you provide the correct credentials here to install IceCast. All right, so I hit it done. The next one says uh, we've now ready to launch IceCast. Browse into uh, program files x86 and install IceCast uh, Win32. And we'll just take it one or two more steps and, and then we'll call it. Uh, I think you'll have a pretty good idea of what we're demonstrating here. So IceCast Win32. All right, we accomplished that part and then, then hit done. And it says the next thing is once IceCast is launched and started, go ahead and start the server button. And once it's running, it should show green. And now it's running. So basically, we've set up a vulnerable service on this workstation. Um, it's essentially right for an attacker to take advantage of. The, if we continue to go through the steps here, and, and I can go through the content here, you see we're on step four out of about 23 steps. So we just kind of continue down the path here. Now, obviously, if anything occurred from a troubleshooting standpoint, there's the option to just, you know, either chat a bit in, in Slack or even kick off a Zoom connection between the, uh, the student and the instructor or the student and the virtual TA. So that's what the virtual TAs are there to also help um, support the students and, and particularly get through the labs. All right. Well, I think that hopefully gives you a pretty decent overview of um, our two different lab types we have and how we troubleshoot those in our live online format. All right, so with that, I'm going to wrap up the demonstration. Hope you all get a chance to join us in some live online classes and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.